In this video I'm going to show you how to run Hibbit mode within Sol for both the initial drop and restocks. First of all you'll need the product ID of the product that you're going to be running for. If this is a hype drop or an upcoming release we'll most likely put this product ID in the guide in the discord so make sure to check that out. But if you are testing or if it's a less hype drop or you want to get a PID ready to run restocks you can get this from the site from in the URL. For example this product here it's the number straight after the slash at the beginning so it's 6801Z on here so it's usually five digits long and you can get it from the URL here if you've watched the finish line video you'll already know this but Hibbit is very similar to finish line in the way that it doesn't cancel multiples on one profile you could hit 100 on one profile and they'll all ship as long as it's a good profile and by good profile I mean a profile that they haven't flagged and that they don't just cancel every order so if you have a jigged address or if you use a catch-all or if you use a fake phone number they'll often flag the address and any orders from this address will be cancelled so as long as you have a good address you can hit multiples to one uh, to test this you might want to place an order for perhaps a very cheap item such as socks and see if they ship if they ship it should be a good address and then you should be good to use this address on a drop and hit as many as you want so by a good address I mean you shouldn't jig the address so just put your normal address in without any sort of jigging at all and also make sure you use a real provider's email such as gmail don't use a catch-all and also make sure you've got a real phone number from the same state that you're running from so for example if i'm running from new york i'll use a new york phone number rather than a fake one or one from a different state but again you can just test this by placing a manual order with the exact same details as the profile and if it ships you should be good for a drop so to create a task simply click add tasks and use the navigation arrows to get to Hibbit. For the product ID I would recommend putting just the product ID rather than the URL so we're going to paste this in here. You can choose your size I'm just going to go for random for testing but you can choose whichever you like. You'll then want to choose a proxy. Uh, as I mentioned earlier quite a lot of both data center and residential proxies are banned so you will want to test this before the drop. Uh, but you could check the successful setups channel in the discord to see what people have had success with on Hibbit and perhaps cop from that provider. Then choose the profile and you want to use a timer. So first I'm going to show you an example of the initial drop and obviously for the initial drop you're going to want to use a timer. They usually drop at 10am and you want to set the timer to exactly 10am. And then I'm just going to add the task. A task created for the initial drop should have a timer as I've just shown you before and you'll want to start your tasks on a release timer more than 40 minutes before the drop. This is because close to the drop time on Hibbit, which is usually 10 a.m. EST, the bot protection gets really high and it may throw errors within the bot when trying to generate and pass their bot protection. So you'll want to start tasks more than 40 minutes before the drop and up to two hours before the drop. So if the drop is at 10 a.m., you'll want to start your tasks between 8 a.m. and 9.20 a.m. So what you can do is if you're running quite a lot of tasks, which quite a lot of people will be, vary the starting times. Some really early, perhaps closer to two hours before, around 8 a.m., and then some closer to the drop, about 40 minutes before, at about 9.20 a.m. As long as you start tasks within this window that I've just mentioned, you should be okay. Uh, but if possible I would vary them uh, within this window. If you can't start them up to two hours before, if that's too early for you, just make sure that you do start them more than 40 minutes before uh, so that you can definitely generate before the bot protection comes uh, into full force. And just for testing sake showing you now, uh, it is about 41 minutes before the drop which is just still inside the time range that I just said so if I haven't already started my tasks which I will have already started some before now uh, I will start this task now it will load the server generate uh, to try and bypass the bot protection and then prepare once it's prepared it will go to waiting and this waiting timer will count down until the exact time you set which should be exactly 10 a.m. When running on a timer, you can use pretty low delays. I would recommend about a thousand and a thousand when you're running on a timer.
Hibbit is slightly different to other sites when it comes to restocks in the fact that on other sites you would probably be running with pretty high delays constantly hoping that a product comes back into stock and you can catch it and check it out. It's slightly different with Hibbit as they restock generally every day beginning at 5.45 a.m. EST and then continue throughout the day on and off at specific times and minutes within each hour. So Hibbit restocks tend to occur at 15 or 17 minutes past the hour and then 45 or 47 minutes past the hour uh, again beginning at 5.45 a.m. EST. Setting up for restocks is pretty much the same as setting up for tasks on an initial drop apart from the timer aspect. So you'll still be using a timer on restock tasks but you'll want to set the timer to 10 seconds before the anticipated restock time as I've just mentioned. So if I was going for the first restock of the day which tends to be at 5.45 a.m. EST I would set my timer to 5.44.50 EST 10 seconds before the anticipated time. So you can do that at all the anticipated times each hour if you want to give yourself a heads up. You don't have to use a timer on restock tasks but it will allow them to be much faster and you'll have a much higher chance of copying them. The first restock of the day can tend to be one of the biggest ones especially if it's after a drop. For example if the drop um, was occurring on a Saturday, the 5.45 a.m. EST drop on the Sunday could be a large restock. If you don't want to wake up for 5.45 in the morning, that's okay. You can set the tasks on the time of the night before and they'll simply wait until the time of the drop. For my example now, it's about 13 minutes before the anticipated restock, so I can start it and it'll go through the motions and then wait for the restock. Again for restocks, it is not particularly necessary to use the timer aspect. If you wanted, you could just run on higher delays constantly. Uh, if you didn't want to have to reset your tasks a couple of times per hour. However, using the timer will significantly reduce the checkout time, making it much more likely to hit a restock. So I really would recommend to utilize the timer function, considering you most of the time know around what time the product will restock. You can use the mass edit window for delays with Hibbit tasks. Uh, if you are using a timer uh, on restocks, the same as with the initial drop, you can use about a thousand and a thousand. And if you aren't using the timer, then you'll want to increase this to not get banned, perhaps around 3000 and 3000. This should be everything you need to know for both initial and restock tasks within Hibbit mode. If anything is still not clear or you have any more questions, feel free to make a ticket within the Discord.